Welcome back to episode five in our Superluminova series. Here we are again with Albert Zeller. He is the CEO of Superluminova in Switzerland. He joins us today to continue telling us more about the product. My name is Stephen Mansfield. I am one of the co-founders of Singularity Watch, and we love Superluminova on all our watches. Now, we, this is episode five. We've been through a number of key stages running up to this. We looked at uh, what Superluminova is, what it physically is. We've talked about its uh, the colors that it emits. We've got its daytime colors as well. We dive deep into the, or we dove deep into the details of how this incredible material, first of all, stores the energy for the emission and then releases that energy for the emission. Now today, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into some of the more practical applications. We're going to look at binders, we're going to look at colors again, and uh, some of the hist history around how the naming of those colors uh, was, was uh, developed. So before we go on, don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe to our uh, newsletter, uh, check us out on our blog. We're at blog.singularity.watch. Don't forget, Singularity, drop all the vowels, S-N-G-L-R-T-Y. Or come and check, that, check us out at our homepage, singularitywatch.com. Don't forget, no vowels. Right, Albert, thanks very much for joining us once again. Now, um, we've been talking about the pigments in, the, in, the last, uh, in our last discussion. And you've told us that the concentration of the pigment that is applied is very important to make sure we get the best performance uh, from the superluminova. Uh, but there must there, there are binders in this process. So basically the glues that we use to take the powder, uh, the, the superluminova powder as it's delivered to the customer, um, we mix it with the binders. Um, is this binder process, binding process, is this something that, that you control at Superluminova or is this something that the, that the dial maker, the watchmaker has uh, the control over? We produce the binder and the pigment separately. The reason for that is that it does not make sense to use the same binder for any applica every application. So we also have quite a lot of different binder systems which we also make in-house there's around 300 types. So for example, mm -hmm. it's very it makes sense to use solvent-based uh, binder for hands, for example, whereas if you use solvent-based binder on the exterior of a watch, that's the worst thing to do. Just imagine someone putting some acetone or mm -hmm. anti-mosquito spray on the luminous deposit, it will soften the deposit and it will fall out. For that, it's maybe better to use a UV curing binder or two component binder. So at the end, every luminizing company, or it can also be the dial or hands manufacturer, they have their own proper binder, which they prefer to use. They maybe also make mixtures of different binders. And depending maybe on, so on the shape of a hand, for example, you have to make a little bit more liquid binder, it means you have to reduce the, the concentration of the pigment in the mixture. Whereas in other applications, it makes sense to also increase the concentration because, for example, if you just set dots on a dial, they need a certain volume and mm -hmm. to avoid shrinking, you need some solid parts in it. it. means there should be a lot of superluminova inside. So Albert, we can see that C1 is the traditional white. Now Daniel and I noticed when we were doing some dials uh, for our watches at Singularity that there's a new option called TC1. What's the difference between these two? Yeah, actually I have to maybe ex explain a little bit the origin of that TC1, which is actually top C1. Uh -huh. That's the reason okay. for the T. So C1 is really heavily white colored, whereas, and or used to be heavily white colored in the, in the standard grade. And when we, is, um, established the A grade quality, we did our thoughts about how this should be constructed. Is it really necessary to put so much whitening pigment into that mixture or can you do it a little bit off-white? 
So therefore, TC1 is just a little bit less wide than C1 with a better performing uh, base uh, pigment. And you have seen it's already double the performance. Yeah. So it's a better base pigment, but also uh, less colorization. And if you go then for the X1 quality, there's even like the better pigment as a base. But for example, for the X1 quality, um, you can also do something a little bit off-white. We offer there, for example, a white 10, which is very comparable with the TC1 body color, up to a white 20, 30, 40, which goes closer and closer to the C3. But I'm quite sure that, for example, on a, on a hand, no one will uh, see a difference, mm -hmm. but you can already uh, increase the luminous performance. I think like from C1 to white 10 up more than 20%. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to not only go for the white, but maybe to check the alternatives. Yeah. We've been referring to all these C's, these C numbers, C1, C3, C5, in all these discussions, perhaps we should just take a little break here. And uh, Albert, if you could explain to us where these uh, references come from, uh, that would be, I think that would help a lot of people. This comes from, uh, from the very past when uh, tritium luminous pigments were the standard. For tritium right. luminous pigments, there was a certain definition that there was C1, which was white, C3 was uh, the, the, the uncolored one, then you had like C5, which is a, a little bit greenish, C7, I think it's a little bit more bluish, C9 and so on. So this was just like color one, two, three, four, five, and so on. But over the years, as you know, the designers got became more creative. They needed uh, other solutions, special solutions. Therefore, this nomenclature was kind of let on the side. But you, as you know, um, when uh, we changed from tritium to the superluminova uh, pigments, people still wanted to have the same look as in the old days. So therefore, we also had to reintroduce that nomenclature. Nowadays, usually we work with Pantone colors mm -hmm. because uh, Pantone, everybody has like the, the sample cards and uh, you can also choose from a little bit uh, broader range than uh, only from that uh, C1 to C9 card. We can see from the chart that C3 is the best performing pigment. Uh, is that white? C3 is the uncolored pigment, therefore it's the always best performing pigment in their quality. So C3 okay. in standard quality is nice, it's good performing, but a C3 in the X1 quality is double as bright performing. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I've got this clear in my head so that I have got a full understanding of what the drivers are for the performance of the superluminova. So if we take the C3 pigment, that is the best performing pigment. That is pure superluminova. It's a yellowish off-white color. And then to color it, we add some uh, colorants, some additional uh, material that will give it its uh, physical appearance, whether that's white or blue or pink, whatever the color is in daylight color. Now, that reduces <clears throat> the um, performance of the superluminova because it dilutes the number of emission centers that are available, should we say, per cubic millimeter of material. So that's one way it degrades the, the, <clears throat> the quality of the, the luminescence. So then that pigment itself, let's use red for example we, we say that red you've told us previously that red is a poor color for uh, emission qualities uh, and the two reasons for that is one when the 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 light is coming in to charge the uh, emission centers that you that photon of light or lots of photons of light 
are actually actually absorbed by the colorant rather than the emission center. And then once the emission center is charged, if that emission center then releases a photon, there's a chance that the, that photon of light doesn't actually emit past the colorant, it's actually absorbed by that molecule of colorant. <clears throat> so in my understanding, there are three different ways that coloring your superluminova can degrade the <clears throat> quality. The first is it will r reduce the, 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 um, the number of or the density of the emission centers. It will then, the, the colorant itself will absorb the charging photons plus it would absorb the emitted photons as well. So you're, you're almost, you've got three different key mechanisms that reduce the quality of your superluminova. Have I got that right? You're completely right. Excellent. I'm glad I understood it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's it's not so difficult, but um, people always expect like that. Uh, oh, I've ordered superluminova in black. Why is it not performing like the other ones? And you just have to imagine a light bulb in your office. If you have a nice nice white emission, it can be uh, beautifully white emitting. But if you take uh, some black paint and put it onto that light bulb. It can be emitting white in the center, but you will never see any light anymore. Thank you very much, Albert. That is the end of episode five of our Superluminova series. Thank you once again for joining us. Uh, next week, we're going on to look at LumiCast, which is, I think, uh, if you like bright Superluminova on your watch, it will be a revelation for you. Um, we've got uh, a quick summary of what's going on as well over the the whole of the uh, the last five episodes too. So do join us. Don't forget, if you don't want to miss anything, sign up for our newsletter on our blog at blog.singularity.watch. Don't forget, drop all the vowels on singularity. S-N-G-L-R-T-Y is how you spell it. Or come and see us at singularitywatch.com. S-N-G-L-R-T-Y-W-A-T-C-H.com. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, and we're on LinkedIn. And of course, you can drop your comments below. We love to have all your comments uh, here. Please put your questions there. We love all your questions, and we will get to them and answer them as quickly as we possibly can. Thanks once again for joining us, and don't forget, see time differently. <laughs>